1997, Reed Hastings returned a rented VHS copy of Apollo 13 to Blockbuster, and it was late. He owed $40 in late fees, and he realized then and there what Blockbuster's real business model was. People weren't paying $2 to rent a movie. They were paying $40 because so many incurred those late fees. People were willing to pay a lot more to rent movies than he thought, and he wondered if people would go for a subscription model like his gym. He paid a monthly fee and could work out at the gym whenever he wanted. Would people pay a monthly fee in order to rent as many movies as they wanted? Along with Mark Randolph, Hastings founded Netflix. Barely more than a decade later, he had put Blockbuster out of business. Innovation is perhaps the most important part of business. Technological advances like the development of DVDs made it possible to send movies through the mail. And that is how Netflix began. But when online video services like YouTube sprang up in the mid 2000s, rather than go the way of Blockbuster, Netflix adapted and became a streaming service. Joseph Schumpeter called this process of new technologies replacing old ones, creative destruction. One industry dies, another is born. Innovation like this is the key to economic growth. And for a deeper discussion on it, I recommend taking my course in macroeconomics. But for now, our theory of the firm won't have much to say about how we get innovation to happen. We take it as given, and our goal when understanding how firms operate is to think about what happens next, after the new technology is developed. The goal of our economic system is to make the best use of the limited resources we have. We want our economy to produce the things people actually want while using the fewest resources possible. In his 1776 book, The Wealth of Nations, Adam Smith argued that this outcome would be achieved if everyone follows their own self-interest. That doesn't mean people have to be selfish or greedy, just that people try to achieve outcomes ranked high in their preferences. In fact, the beauty of Adam Smith's system is that it tricks greedy and selfish people into doing good things. When people are free to trade and are not forced to pay for things they don't want, the only way to get money from other people is to produce something they genuinely want and will pay for. Firms are the economic agents which produce goods and services. Firms include everything from a single person producing something to a multinational corporation with hundreds of thousands of employees. The main function of firms is to take inputs like raw materials and labor and technology and turn them into the stuff people desire. In order to accomplish this function, firms need to figure out the answer to three key questions. First, what price to set? Firms often decide how much they will charge for their product, and that decision is going to depend not only on what it costs to produce something, but also what prices their competitors are charging. Second, firms need to figure out what quantity to produce. You don't want to produce too little and leave money on the table, but you also don't want to produce too much and end up losing money. And lastly, firms need to decide what business they want to be in. They need to know when to enter and exit an industry. Firms use resources that could be used to produce other things. Whether they do it themselves or end up out of business, we want to get a sense of when to expect an industry to grow or shrink as firms enter or leave. We need a theory of the firm.